Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it's going to be Streets of Rage 2 for the Sega Genesis. This is a game I did a Let's Play on several, several years ago now, and I uh, figured it was time for a re-record, since I've got a totally different capture setup now and everything should look, you know, crisp and clear compared to many, many years ago. Um, this is also a game I haven't really played in a while uh, outside of my practice sessions this past week, and over this past week I've had a really good time going back to this game. It is, man, this game has aged so, so well. It's got great visuals, amazing music, uh, such varied gameplay uh, when it comes to the beat-em-up gameplay, and it's it's just excellent. Um, I've also had requests in the past to do Streets of Rage 1 and 3, and I'm actually not as familiar with those games, and I figured to, to sort of kick that off, uh, to sort of push me in that direction anyway, is to finally go back and redo Streets of Rage 2 so I'm satisfied with the video quality and stuff like that. And then once that's out of the way, I can focus eventually in the near future on parts 1 and 3. Maybe 3 first, because Part 3 seems a little bit easier to me uh, based on what I've played than Part 1. I guess we'll see. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go through Streets of Rage 2. Um, hopefully have a good time at it. And, um, and uh, yeah. So, before we actually jump into the game, um, as, as usual, guys, I'd like to give a big shout-out to my current Patreon backers. So, they're going to flash by the screen. Thank you guys for your continued support. Also, we're going to flash by the recent live stream Super Chatters. Uh, I stream, as of now, every Thursday night. Uh, so, feel free to come by, hang out, and say hello. And thank you guys, once again, for your patronage. Uh, so, you do have an options menu in this game. You've got various difficulty modes. Uh, from what I understand, the hardest difficulty mode in this game is extremely difficult and that is something I do want to revisit in the future. But for now, much like my original Let's Play many years ago, uh, I'm just going to be doing the normal difficulty mode. And you can also put your lives up. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at three. And you've got sound test menus, even voice test. So you do have some options here you can tinker with. Uh, especially if you're having troubles with the game, you can put it down on easy mode if you want. Um, I always try to play it on normal if I can. So, very much like my old Let's Play, we're going to be playing as Axel again. One of the awesome things about Streets of Rage 2 is you have so many different characters to choose from. They each have their own different movesets and different styles of play. There's just so much replay value in this game just from the, the various characters alone that just change the overall feel of the game. Uh, this game is also two players at the same time. And so, you know, you can you can toss a controller over to a friend and uh, you guys can go at it together, which is nice. So one of the awesome things in Streets of Rage 2 is they they included these uh, special moves, almost almost Street Fighter kind of moves, if you will. You know, fighting games had really started to take off by this point when Streets of Rage 2 had come out. Um, and so you've got stuff that's similar to what you had at some of the popular you know, in some of the popular fighting games at the time. So what Axel has here is called uh, Grand Upper. You can activate it by pressing um, forward, forward, and then B. And he'll basically do this dashing uppercut. Uh, he basically dips down on the ground, he'll duck under attacks that are uh, too high, and uh, he'll do a ton of damage. And what I like to do is I like to start a combo with my regular punch and just do two hits and then a Grand Upper. It just does an insane amount of damage. Um, it, this game does have damage scaling though, which I found interesting in revisiting this. Uh, kind of like Street Fighter 2, it's a good, another good example, is, you know, the more hits you do, um, the more the damage scales back. So you'll, you'll end up doing less damage uh, per hit as, um, you know, the amount of hits uh, goes up in your combo. So I found that the best way to, to play with Axel is just to not do a 1, 2, 3 combo, so you hit 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. 1, 2, 3, then a Grand Upper. That'll actually do less damage than just a 1, 2 and a Grand Upper. So, what I prefer to do is just kind of like pin enemies down with a couple punches like that, and then do a Grand Upper, just like so. Now, you know, if you're not trying to play for extreme efficiency or something like that, uh, it is, you know, you, you can, you've got so many other moves at your disposal, so you've got weapons like this as well. Um, and you can also throw the weapons by pressing B and C together, just like that. But you've got other attacks, like with Axel you can hold down the B button and then release it after a certain period of time. He'll do this really strong kick attack, it's just like a dual kick. Bam bam, just like that. It's really satisfying to pull off. And then he's also got a backhand, just like that. 
So if you got enemies on both sides of you, you can you can do a backhand with Axel. And yeah, so much flexibility here. You got multiple different types of grapples and throws that you can do when you when you you know grab on the enemies like that. One thing that's really neat about the grapples in this game is that when you hit enemies with them, if other enemies kind of walk into you as you're doing them, they'll get hit as well. Uh, whereas in, a, you know, a, a great example is Final Fight, if you grapple somebody in that game and you do an attack with the grapple, you won't actually, um, you won't actually hit the guy. So, it's more specifically in Final Fight, the knee attack. If you grapple someone in Final Fight and then, um, do your knee attack, which does a ton of damage in that game, uh, it won't actually hurt other enemies that are around you. It'll only hit the guy that you're grabbed onto. So, it's a really neat little attention to detail in Streets of Rage 2, where if you're grabbed onto someone, um, you will do damage to someone else that walks into you at that same time. It's it's very nice. It makes grappling actually really good in this game. Uh, just like in Final Fight as well, you can also throw enemies into other enemies and it will do damage. Now, you also have uh, jump kicks, kind of like this. This is a standing jump kick, or I should say a just jump regular jumping jump kick. Uh, standing in place jumping. Jumping jumping in place, yeah, that's the right term. Um, useful uh, for certain situations, I don't use it too often in the game. Um, but also you've got, you know, if you jump forward to do a jump kick, you will do just kind of a standard jump kick. It's got really good range, really good reach. And then if you hold down and press B, you'll do a knee attack. Kind of like Final Fight. hate to be constantly comparing this to Final Fight, but Final Fight is one of my most played beat-em-ups of all time. So, you know, it's going to be kind of it's kind of natural for me to compare this to that. Plus, that was also another popular beat-em-up uh, at the time. Which I actually need to try to practice on Sega CD, so I can do a Sega CD Let's Play of that. Uh, but yeah, so you can use your knee attack right here. Um, but you've also got a series of special, special moves. So for this, I did forward and A, and he basically does this rapid punch attack, which can really dish out the damage, just like that. Takes a little bit of your health though, because it's it's so good. It takes a little bit of your health. Now, if you stand and just press A, you'll do this fire attack. Um, which will also take away some health. That's kind of like uh, what they would call an extra joy, or kind of like a panic attack. If if you're surrounded by enemies, you can you can do your attack like that, and you'll mostly come out of it unscathed. You'll take a little bit of damage uh, from your you know from just using it. It's just the cost of using it, um, but you'll get all the enemies around you off of your back. So this, uh, this bartender guy here, he can actually block your attacks. There's only a few enemies in the game that can block attacks, but he's one of them. And he can actually be pretty tough later in the game. Right now, he's, he's not very tough. The early bosses of the game are pretty easy. And so I just use the same kind of strategy on him, where I just do a couple punches, and then I do my grand upper. So the combination is basically punch-punch, and then forward-forward-punch. And then you'll do a nice little string of combos, you'll do a ton of damage. And guys that block, I find the Grand Upper works really well on them because they have a tendency of unblocking uh, when you're doing the Grand Upper. Because the Grand Upper goes down, it kind of goes, it goes really low on the screen, um, almost outside of like their block window. It seems like I don't know if that's actually what's happening, but you know, in some fighting games, uh, when you block, you can only block certain level attacks. So if you're doing a standing block, you can only block hits that are high or medium, but if someone does like a low kick into your shins or something, you can't block those just by standing. Um, and I f almost feel like certain bosses in this game operate in a similar manner. Because I'll notice that I'll pick them up off the ground when I do a grand upper, but if I just sit there punching them with or attacking them with regular moves, uh, it won't do anything. So when I see apples and meat and things like that, I have a tendency of, you know, preferring to just leave it on screen. That was a bad example right there because I got knocked over to the right from that explosion which pushed the screen over a little bit and it pushed the apple off the screen. But generally, I like to keep uh, the fruits on the screen until I, I really need them. I don't like to pick them up if I don't need them because then I might take some damage and then, you know, they'd be gone by that point. We can use the Grand Upper to take out these cyclists as well. So the motorcycles motorcycles that come out here, you can jump kick them, which is probably the easiest way to deal with them. Yeah, but if you've got the timing right, you can also do a Grand Upper, and I mistimed that. See, kind of like that. 
And I should mention, as far as like fruits and meat are concerned, um, I try to leave them on screen until I really need them. Um, so at that point, you know, I already know what an apple's gonna give me. An apple doesn't give you full health. So I had, you know, about half health. So I knew I could go ahead and pick up the apple and not feel guilty about it. I'm gonna need it anyway, regardless. But if that was meat there, which gives you most of your health back, um, I definitely prefer to leave it until my health gets really, almost dangerously low. Or at least, I'd say, in the, the lower, you know, the lower three quarters uh, of my health bracket. See, like, there's some meat right there. I'm just gonna kind of leave it, actually. Actually, I should probably go pick it up now. There we go. We got it. And that's that. This game has not just a lot of gameplay variety, but just the, the stage variety is just enormous in this game. I mean, halfway through this level, you go into a, a truck, and you're fighting as you're bouncing down the highway. It's really, it's really awesome. They just did a phenomenal job of mixing up the environments in this game. You know, I was thinking about it earlier, and this is kind of where, like, the Genesis was really starting to, like, mature. Like, 91 to 92, you know, from, like, Sonic the Hedgehog uh, up to Streets of Rage 2 in games like that. The Genesis was really starting to, uh, you know, really just improve in just about every way possible. Now, you, you had exceptions. You had developers that did a poor job of taking advantage of the hardware, but... You know, these sort of bigger budget productions at the time, like Streets of Rage 2, I mean, so much detail in, in the visuals and, and the audio is fantastic. Just so much flexibility in the gameplay, and these are really amazing games. And there were a lot of games like this, you know, around this, this time period. We're gonna, we're gonna actually be covering another beat-em-up in the Genesis uh, very soon, uh, Team of the Hyperzone Heist, probably even next week, actually, so spoiler alert. And, um, you know, another good example, that came out a year after this, and, you know, phenomenal sounding game, really great visuals in that one as well. Alright, so this boss right here, you kind of want him to get onto the same plane as you. Um, I like to just get up to the top and then just jump kick him. Or if I really wanted to, I can do a grand upper, which will do more damage. But you don't want to get too close to him, because he'll do a, a grapple like that, and he'll do a lot of damage. Let's go ahead and pick up this meat. Let's bait him back to the top. And there's a grand upper. And there's another one. The grand upper will definitely do more damage here. You've got to watch out. If he goes high into the air, get out of the way, because he'll do this right there. He'll do this 45 degree angle attack that is very difficult to counter, so... What I do is I just get to the top, wait for him to do this sort of horizontal Superman kind of attack, and then I I, I go for him. So we've got five lives too, we've got uh, no deaths so far, which is nice. Uh, we're gonna need every life we can get if we want to try to do, say, a one credit clear on this game. I'm pretty sure I got a one credit clear on my Let's Play from many, many years ago, but I also think that I think I died a lot in that playthrough. I was getting close to the end of my rope uh, on that playthrough, despite still getting a one credit clear. So if you're playing on the normal difficulty... Uh, oops, I should have left that apple, actually. I wasn't paying attention. If you're playing on the normal difficulty, I wouldn't say the game is that difficult. I mean, it can still pose a challenge, for sure, if you don't know what you're doing. But with some practice, I think the game is uh, not super, super challenging. It's most certainly not Final Fight challenging. Final Fight is, is a brutal game, even on its, you know, normal difficulty modes. But, um... But still, I remember when I first played this game back in the day, I would continue quite a bit. You know, my friends and I, we would continue frequently. So it's not like we just tore through this game easily um, back in the day. I mean, particularly when, when playing by ourselves. When, it was play when we were playing together, it was kind of a different story. But there's a difference between, say, dying only a couple times in a playthrough and dying ten times in a playthrough. You do get extra lives from points. We actually just got one. And those arcade cabinets actually say Bare Knuckle. Um, this game was actually called Bare Knuckle in Japan, or specifically Bare Knuckle 2. And that's what the Streets of Rage series was called over there, and that's why you see the name on the arcade cabinets. There are actually some other hints to the, uh, the naming of the Japanese versions um, in other parts of the game, uh, like the baseball stadium, and I'll point that out once we get to it. It's kind of interesting. 
But yeah, you do get a lot of extra lives in this game if you play well. Um, it, you know, if you the, ble the better you play, the easier a one credit clear comes because um, you just you have so many lives in the bank. Like I think I got to the the final stage once and I had like ten lives left over because um, I did so well in a run. So hopefully we'll have a run like that that goes pretty smoothly. Uh, the key to having a run go smoothly is knowing exactly how to deal with bosses in particular. It's really important to know how to deal with, you know, level situations, but it's even more. I think, think, think it's even more important to know how to deal with the bosses, because the bosses usually require you to tackle them a very specific way. And if you don't, they just, they annihilate you. They do a ton of damage. Oops, I did it again. For some reason, I thought that was going to be a sword or a pipe or something like that, and so I just went ahead and grabbed it. Like, there's a free extra life, so we got seven lives now. Alright, so we're going to have these ninja guys up top coming down, and for these guys, I try not to be fancy. I just do punches, because my regular punch in this game has very high priority. It comes out really, really quickly, and I don't even bother with the sword on these guys. Oops, and I just picked, I totally just picked that up by accident. If you're near a weapon, uh, if you're really close to a weapon, uh, it'll just, it'll, you'll grab it, even though, like, you don't intend on it. And the Grand Upper just does so much damage, too. Like, I actually do more damage with, by doing Punch Punch Grand Upper than I do just swiping with the sword. And my punches come out faster than the sword does. So, what I used to do is, I used to play with the weapons as much as I, I possibly could. Um, but I found that it's actually safer for me not to. And these dominatrixes, they, they can be tough to deal with. Uh, you really don't want to jump kick them, because they will jump kick you and have greater priority. And I got screwed there because I was on top of a knife and I tried picking up the knife. I wasn't trying to pick up the knife, I was trying to punch the guys. So that's also something you have to worry about in this game. So one thing I like to do is I like to just get rid of the knives, like get them out of here because they just, they interrupt, like see I picked that one up by accident, it was actually hidden behind the um, the railing, so the railing was actually covering that up. Yeah, I've actually died at this part uh, a couple times because of things like that, that guy drops so many knives, you go to punch and instead of punching you pick up a knife. And then because you're picking up that knife, you get punched in the face, or ganged up like I did by those two guys. We're gonna go ahead and grab this right away. I'm not gonna save that, because my health was below 50%. And there's a sword. We'll go ahead and pick up the sword for right now. I do like using the sword for just like these basic enemies. So it does, does quick damage. It's got good reach. And if you try to grapple enemies when you have a weapon in your hand, you do drop the weapon. And what's interesting about Streets of Rage 2 um, is that you can only pick up a weapon so many times. So you, you really don't want to grapple enemies if you have a weapon that you want to keep, like the sword. Because you're going to grapple an enemy one time, and then the sword's going to drop to the ground, it's going to disappear just because you grappled an enemy. And that's kind of a kick in the nuts, if you ask me. We're just kind of taking our time here. But this is a mini boss. We're gonna actually try to get over to the right hand side. We're just gonna do the grand upper. There we go. Alright, and we're going to fight a boss here as well. More ninjas. And I'm going to get rid of that sword, actually. Nice. Okay, so for guys like this, I just try to wait for them to dash at me, and then do a grand upper. And I mess that up. Just like that. Oops, I messed that up. All 
All right, let's pick up that meat. Got it. Just like that. Just like that. And like that. Awesome. Good job. Yeah, that guy, that guy can be tricky. He's got a variety of different attacks. It's kind of hard to read him. Uh, like, there are sometimes he was starting to run at me, and then he would do the air spinning attack, where I thought he was going to do a ground slide. The ground slide is the ideal attack, at least against Axel, because the ground upper will do the most amount of damage if he comes at you with a ground slide. So I actually got a little tense there on that stage. Let's just get rid of that. Yeah, I got a little tense on that stage uh, for a moment. I was taking some damage and uh, getting hit by guys I wasn't expecting to get hit by, like the um, like the ninja. So these guys with the they run at you with knives. They can be tricky to deal with. So I try to just just run around them or jump kick over them. Not even over them, but jump kick them. You can time a grand upper. Um, and you can also try to time a punch to the face. But it's pretty risky to do so. And you know, I never realized this until now, but that castle in the background looks a little bit like uh, Disney's uh, Magical Kingdom castle. You know, there's a lot of little details that I'm picking up now that I probably should have picked up on back in the day, but you know, when I play games, a lot of times I'm focused on the, the foreground, I'm focused on the gameplay not the backgrounds, but I love it when backgrounds are extremely detailed because I can look at them later on and be like, oh wow, that's that's cool, I never saw that there. So one thing I try not to do in this game is just get like right on top of enemies like this, um, because some enemies have invincibility frames as they get up, and you'll go to swipe with your pipe or your sword and it'll just go right through them. Uh, because when they wake up, they have invincibility frames. Now, guys like that that I just fought, it's safer to do that because they don't really have the invincibility frames when they get up. But just to play relatively safe, I try to like use almost the same kind of strategy on almost everyone that I fight against. Because, you know, if I get used to attacking certain enemies right as they get up, but then forgetting I can't do that against others, that'll that'll definitely uh, bite me in the rear later. So, here's actually the reference to Bare Knuckle 2, or the Bare Knuckle series in Japan. So if you look up top, above the, uh, the baseball scoreboard, it says Bare 2. Which is uh, a reference to Bare Knuckle 2. Alright, so for these chicks, I like to just get up and punch them. That is the best strategy for me. If I try to jump into them, they'll either use their whip, and the whip uh, will go upwards, so it'll actually hit you, and you'll you'll take damage trying just trying to jump kick them. We got another extra life as well, so we got eight lives now. Go ahead and just leave that apple. And there we go. Didn't need it, but, you know, I, I just want to leave it in case I get hit. In case I get hit. Alright, these fat guys are kind of tough to deal with as well sometimes. I try to just wait for them. If See, if they do a jump attack like that, you can't really do much about it, so... Just same old strategy, get in, do two punches, and then do my grand upper. This section could be uh, fairly tricky as well. Actually, from this point on in the game, the game can be definitely more challenging than than the points leading up to this. You'll see a greater density, a gritty, greater enemy density. So you know enemies come out in more in greater numbers.
And that's where taking advantage of your special moves really, really becomes important. Like using your grand upper, things like that. If you get desperate, use your uh, A attack. And then don't be afraid to uh, try to do some uh, crowd control. And what I mean by crowd control is grabbing on the enemies, tossing them to a certain side of the screen. Uh, enemies are a whole lot easier to deal with if you can keep them all on one side of the screen. So I punch this guy. Oops, I didn't mean to press A like that. You know, I've noticed I, myself doing that with this Genesis 6 button controller. I think I've been playing so much uh, Super Nintendo and NES, I'm not used to, like, the the larger sort of floating buttons that you get on a, a Sega Genesis 6-button controller. I love the 6-button controller, same with the Saturn controller, but, you know, when you play uh, systems that have certain button types um, for a long time, and then you switch over to a console that doesn't, or that has a totally different kind of button type, you might actually graze buttons by accident and end up pressing the wrong keys. And I find that that's been happening to me going through my little Genesis binge over these last few weeks. So what I meant to do there was uh, was not do my special. I was going to grapple the guy and throw him to the other side of the screen. So this guy, what you really, really want to do is just kind of hit him, knock him over, and then he's going to do his charge attack. For the charge attack, you just want to do a grand upper. Man, this is bad. Well, that's our first death. So this guy could be a pain to deal with, but really, you need to hit him, then he'll go into his charge mode. Do your charge. Thank you. And then you just do a grand upper. You just rinse and repeat. But getting him into this loop can be can be difficult, as you saw. Yeah, so this guy was always trouble for me back in the day. And as you can see, he can still be some trouble for me now. But if you can get him into that loop, you know, you just wait until he charges up and then comes at you. Then you can do your grand upper and guarantee damage to him. Good damage, too. But you don't want to go in and try to combo that guy because he's got this uh, special ability where um, he pretty much just like busts out of your combo. Which is why you saw me not get up to him and try to throw him or, or do some other fancy things. One other thing that's really nice in this game, and... I don't know if this was because, you know, they wanted to mix up how the enemies looked, or if this was just a way to make the backgrounds more colorful throughout the course of the game. You know, the Sega Genesis had a pretty limited color palette compared to, say, the Super Nintendo. And, um... You know, to maybe ha maybe use a wider mix of colors over the course of the game, um, enemy colors might have had to have been swapped out as well. And that might be why we have enemies with different uh, color palettes. But I think it actually works in the game's favor. I mean, I don't know if that was even a requirement. Maybe it was just a deliberate design choice where they, you know, uh, wanted to just mix up the, uh, the colors of the enemies. And if that's the case, that's that's awesome that they they, they did that. Because if you play something like like Final Fight, uh, or heck, I think even the first Streets of Rage, um, you know, you're attacking the same enemies over the course of the entire game, um, same colors and everything. So you know, by the end of the game, it starts to get a little repetitive. Whereas in Streets of Rage 2, yeah, you fight the same types of enemies, but one guy will be wearing green pants, another guy will be wearing blue pants. One guy will have, you know, red hair, another guy will have brown hair. Um, that sort of thing. Just a little, little attention to detail like that can go a long ways to, uh, you know, making a game feel less repetitive as it goes on. You know, especially at beat-em-ups like this. Beat-em-ups are notorious for, for getting repetitious. And a lot of that is you're just attacking the same kinds of enemies. I noticed one other way they kind of got around that is... Uh, you'll notice the uh, enemy names in this game are constantly changing. So like in Final Fight, you're always fighting the same kind of guy uh, with the same name over the course of the game. Like you'll you'll kill Hollywood a hundred times or two hundred times over the course of a playthrough. 
Uh, whereas in this game, you've got a guy who's named Brown. You got a guy named Galgia. Well, Galgia actually you do see multiple times. Uh, but the, the names change. It's it's pretty cool. And actually, come to think of it, now that I, I'm on this sort of tangent, um, I'm thinking the names are actually linked to the colors of the characters. So the different palette swapped characters have different names. I think that's actually how it is. That's very cool. Never noticed that until now. Yes, yeah, so like Fog we fought in before. And you've got different colored variations on them, so that's Calm. The green one is called Calm. Let's go ahead and pick up this apple. These guys are going to drop some grenades. Oops, see, that it happened again. I was on top of a weapon. I was trying to punch, but instead of picking up the weapon, instead of punching, it picked up the weapon. So that actually kind of screwed me over. There's one reason I'll pick up weapons and I'll just say, get out of here. Get out of here. You're going to do me more harm than good. Alright, so this is going to be kind of tricky without, uh, without some meat. Actually, there might be some meat here. Let's see if I can throw this guy into those boxes. Yep. Alright, we're going to go ahead and grab that. Alright, so with this box here, here I kind of just want to do my grand upper over and over. But I need to get this fat guy out of here. There we go, just like that. So what I often do on this guy is and I messed up, is I just kind of kind of play footsie with them. Just just move back and forth until I get uh, kind of close to him. And then I do my grand upper. And he's a guy you can't really combo either. So, you know, there are bosses in this game where you really have to rely on just good timing of your specials. And I'm not doing, not having a good showing here, unfortunately, on these bosses. See, just like that. You can wait for him to attack, so I'm constantly tapping forward. See, just like that. I'm just constantly tapping forward. Just like that. Yeah, probably a better strategy there is actually focusing on taking out the enemies, because notice how the enemies stopped coming in. And that's probably the toughest part of that boss fight, is getting overwhelmed. You got that boss, you can't really combo, you have to do a special against him. You might be able to jump kick him or something like that. Um, but then you've got the other enemies to deal with as well. So, I mean, we've lost two lives, not a big deal. We've still got a good amount of lives. This beach stage, I don't recall it being too terribly difficult, but the boss fight is a, a series of two bosses we've already fought in before. We've already fought before. Let's get rid of that. So these kickboxers could be pretty tough as well. You really just want to get up and just punch them. Remember, with Axel in particular, your your basic punch just has really good priority. It's really fast. It'll just come out and hit enemies 
you know, before their animations are even done, before their attacks even come out, basically. I'm gonna try to save that meat. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab it now. And he threw me, I was trying to throw him. See, look at how much damage just a 1-2, then Grand Upper does. It's just, it's extremely good in this game. Now, you can try to do a Grand Upper by itself, but it actually won't do as much damage as that, that chain together. And the Grand Upper actually comes out a little bit slower, so it, it can be risky. It's probably like a frame or two slower. So it's, it's safer to just go up and punch an enemy and then do a Grand Upper. And you get the benefit of just doing more damage in the process. It's kind of nice, actually. Yeah, those bikers can be a pain to deal with, so you really want to just knock them off their bikes. There we go. Oh, I was trying to grab him. Man, what are these people doing? Yeah, so one thing you don't really want to do in this game is just walk up to enemies and grab them. You can do that in Final Fight, but I find in Streets of Rage, there's a gr there's a really good chance they're going to grab you instead. The thing in Final Fight is, uh... Enemies don't really grab. It's just not something you see. So, it's kind of tough dealing with both of these guys at once. But one good way to deal with this is try to take out the air guy first, and then deal with the, the ground guy. And same strategy as before, just wait for him to do an attack, and then try to do your grand upper. Just like that. It's best when he does his slide attack, you'll do the most, most damage. Notice how I'm only doing one hit when he's up in the air. But when he does his slide, I do multiple hits. Just like that. All right, so we've only got, uh, I think, two more levels to go. So we go to a sort of like a factory stage, and then we go to the uh, the big boss's uh, final level. So, still doing okay. You know, eight lives. You can see how some of these guys are getting faster now, too. So they're getting a little more difficult to deal with.
Go ahead and grab this pipe. These guys are getting kind of annoying with their speed. They're overriding my punches. There we go. One up, very nice, nine lives. Let's go ahead and grab that. All right, there we go. All right, elevator section. So we're gonna go up this elevator and then uh, we're gonna be at the boss fight. We're gonna go ahead and just save that meat. So you might have noticed, I'm not really using my uh, my other attack, this one right here. That's uh, mainly because when you do it, you're you're just kind of stuck in that one direction for you know a long period of time. And I prefer to have more control over my movement and where I'm facing. The grand upper is just a lot safer, and it doesn't cost me any health either. You know, if I'm going to use one of those specials, I'll just use this one right here, which comes out faster. It's, oh, I was going to say get rid of the sword. Get out of here, sword. Man, that was awful. I don't like actually uh, grabbing on the enemies in this game and, you know, like kneeing them and things like that. Because it's really slow in this game. You know, in something like Final Fight, it's actually really fast, so it's, it's actually quite beneficial to do that if you can time it just right. But in Streets of Rage 2, you really don't want to grab on the enemies unless it's to throw them. You know, in a situation like this where you've got a lot of enemies, the enemy density is pretty great. Like, you don't want to throw them. Or, I should say, you don't want to grab them, unless it's to throw. Throwing is different because you'll throw them into other enemies, and they'll all fall down as a result. And that can be beneficial. But just sitting there and, like, you know, slamming them in the gut with your knee... ...doesn't help you, because it's really, really slow. This guy right here, Soya with the knives, um... He's one of those guys you can't really attack as he gets back up. You just want to kind of wait for him. He's got a very large reach with uh, his knives as well. So get out of here. And we're dead. Man, that's two lives we lost. There we go. We might have to fight another boxer, actually. I don't remember if that's on this level or the next... No, it's the next level. Okay. So these are some robots. 
I just do the same basic strategy as other enemies. Go ahead and just use this attack. See, if you're just if you just got one enemy like that, that attack can be great if you don't mind losing a little bit of health. But it's not a good attack if you got a lot of enemies around you. There's another extra life. Yeah, so I'm actually really disappointed we died twice on that stage, but um It's okay. You know, we still got eight lives. We're Pretty much, I don't want to say guaranteed, I never like to say I'm guaranteed to get that one critic here, but the chances are really, really high right now. Unless things like this keep happening throughout the level. There's the boxer. Same strategy as before. Look at how much damage that guy does. You don't want to get close to him. I didn't really want to pick up that apple, but I also didn't want to try to grab it by accident when I was doing an attack. Mistimed that. There we go. Alright, that's that. Looks like this is working pretty well. See how, like, your grand upper, it hits low. You actually see where uh, it hits. It makes these little, uh, you know, hit marks on enemies when you make contact. There we go. So same thing, same thing as before. Hope that he dashes at me and I get the timing right on my grand upper. Just like that. There we go, that was good. Well, I should say better than the original boss fight anyway. Alright, so we're gonna have to fight another group of enemies here, and then this guy's sidekick comes out, or his bodyguard. And then we basically fight uh, the big boss himself.
Captain's boss has a lot of priority too, so he can override your attacks. And grab you, apparently, even though he's not right in front of you. Alright. So this last guy can be pretty tricky. He's got a machine gun. And when he's on the other side of the screen, uh, you can expect to take a lot of damage. And there we go, we just beat the game. So, you know, pretty smooth run in the first half, but, you know, and then it kind of started to go downhill in the second half. But overall, I think it was still a pretty good playthrough. Um, you know, we ended up with six lives at the end, which I think was actually more than my last practice run. I was, I was streaming this on Twitch, and when you're streaming on Twitch, uh, a lot of times you're not as focused, and you're not paying attention because of other distractions, but... Um, yeah, so we just beat Treats of Rage 2. I hope you guys enjoyed that playthrough. Yeah, man, the, the last one I did of this, I think, was probably sometime in 2012 or 2013. So it's it's been at least five years uh, as of doing this video. Um, four or five years. I'm pretty sure it was 2013. Yeah, regardless, uh, you know, for those of you guys that have been around on my channel for a while, I uh, hope you enjoyed a repeat playthrough, and for those of you guys newer to my channel and that haven't seen a Streets of Rage 2 playthrough, I hope you guys enjoyed that as well. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, I do want to try to tackle Streets of Rage 1 and 3 sometime in the future. I do have part 1, uh, well, and 3 actually, I can play either one, um, but uh, I'm not super familiar with either one, and it's been one of those like highly requested series. Uh, Streets of Rage 2, obviously I've already had on my channel for a while, but I've just had a lot of requests to do parts 1 and 3. Part 1 in particular. Uh, so, hopefully sometime in the near future, I can, now that Streets of Rage 2 is out of the way again, with a re-record, with updated hardware, and a, a updated capture setup, I can start focusing my, my attention on, you know, Streets of Rage 1 and 3. So, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to do those sometime in the near future. Um, hope you guys have actually been enjoying these Genesis playthroughs. I'll, I'll have a couple more up my sleeve over the next uh, couple of weeks, most likely. Um, and then we'll probably switch over to some other consoles as well. I've just been on a bit of a Genesis binge. Uh, honestly, my Genesis and Sega CD combo is so huge, because it's a Genesis Model 1 with the Sega CD Model 2, that when I bring it out, I just kind of like to leave it out, because I don't really want to disconnect it and then put it away and then just bring it back out again a week or two later. So if it's out, I just leave it out. And that's like all I play for a little while. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, which is one of the reasons for all these Genesis Let's Plays in the, the, the recent weeks. But yeah, I hope you guys have been enjoying those. And uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything, um, you know, be sure to post a comment down below. Uh, also, I'm going to go ahead and just wrap things up here. So, you know, if you guys enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up or give it a thumbs down if you thought it was utter garbage. And uh, if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. And for everyone else already subbed, and uh, thank you for your continued support. Hope you guys continue to enjoy these Let's Plays. Um, I'll see you in the next video. And until then, take it easy.